Hello everyone, this is Richard from Modern Healthy Hong Kong. Today I'll provide a quick update on a few topics. So one, our NMN journey and different formats of NMN supplements. Two, olive oil as an activator of SIRT1. Three, Dr. Sinclair's blood work results. Four, a discount offer to our audience on the biological age test that we use. And five, our new channel playlist and Twitter account. So quick disclaimer, this is just a record of my wife and my experience with NMN and other anti-aging protocols and is not medical advice. So first, an update on our NMN experience. As our NMN is ordered from the US, delivery was delayed because of the coronavirus situation. And when we were not taking it for a couple of days, we were both noticeably more tired. My wife pointed out that she hasn't seen me napping in the afternoon for a very long time. The new batch has now arrived and this time we are trying NMN in capsules instead of powder. So every capsule is 150 milligrams. The claim of the capsule is that it helps NMN get through the stomach without being digested and gets it into the small intestine where the NMN transporter SLC-12A8 is most abundant. SLC-12A8 was identified last year by a team at Washington University in St. Louis as a gene that transports NMN across cell walls which is a key requirement if NMN is to be an effective NAD booster. So in the anti-aging supplement field, how Dr. Sinclair takes his NMN and resveratrol is always quite a topic for discussion, particularly there is confusion as to whether he takes NMN with yogurt or not. So in a recent YouTube interview, Dr. Sinclair took NMN with his morning coffee and I took a couple of screenshots from it. So here we are, two screenshots, one of Dr. Sinclair holding his coffee mug and taking an NMN capsule, and the other showing his yogurt jar for taking his resveratrol. Would like to thank the interviewer, Mr. Kalani, for his interesting discussion with Dr. Sinclair, in which he also talked about his experience taking four grams of NMN per day. The link to the interview is in the description. For me, I am taking three capsules of 150 milligrams each for a total of 450 milligrams each morning with water. So far, I do feel my energy level seems about the same as when I was taking 750 milligrams in powder format. My wife started taking one capsule of 150 milligrams. She felt a bit lightheaded, the same effect as when she increased her dosage from 600 to 750 milligrams with the powder. We tried this three times and had the same effect each time. So it's only anecdotal feeling, but we do find that both of us have a stronger effect from the capsules, so perhaps the absorption of the capsule is better than the powder for us. So in terms of other formats, recently there was a uh, 250 milligram lozenge released, which is designed for more simple sublingual administration. So as a quick review, the idea behind sublingual administration is that the NMN is absorbed directly into the bloodstream and thus avoids going through the stomach and being processed by the liver. There is no proof as to whether this works and Dr. Sinclair has explicitly said that he does not use this method. Having said that, when we buy NMN next time, we are planning to try lozenges and we, we shall update you with the result when we do that. As we were talking about the different formats, we did a price comparison to see how the price varies by format. So please note that we are not trying to compare prices by vendor, but relative prices for different formats in general. So for this, we, we selected two vendors. The prices came from Amazon US and we calculated based on a single bottle without any discount or bulk order price. We can see the cheapest is the powder form, both companies below $5 per gram. And the most expensive format is sublingual gel, which is close to $8 per gram. Obviously, a key factor in making a decision is how bioavailable the supplement is in the different forms. But unfortunately, there is not much data on that at the moment. While we were looking at the prices, we also looked at NR, for example, True Niagen. I have heard and people have commented on my previous videos that NR is a lot cheaper. However, when we looked at it, it seems to be about the same, around $5.26 per gram. If you are, have used NR and NMN, it would be great for the channel if you could put your experiences in the comment. We would be very interested to hear if there is a difference between when taking these two supplements. Moving on to olive oil. So one thing that I did think was exciting was that olive oil may have the same effects as resveratrol. 
In a recent podcast with Rich Roll, Dr. Sinclair talked about other ways that SIRT1 can be activated. And one of these is when the body makes monounsaturated fats or MUFAs. This happens during the breakdown of body fat when you are fasting. So according to this new research, these MUFAs activate SIRT1. We can also mimic this by taking MUFAs, and one of these is oleic acid, the main component in olive oil, avocados, and also present in walnuts. So taking olive oil seems to have a similar benefit to taking resveratrol, and I should get a double bump from my resveratrol in olive oil in the morning. Links to the podcast and the original paper that Dr. Sinclair was referring to are in the description. So Dr. Sinclair's biomarkers. So I'd like to give a shout out to uh, Chem Ukar for mentioning this in his comments to a previous video. So Dr. Sinclair recently had his biomarkers checked and he tweeted about it as well as putting them in Facebook and Instagram. So they were all good except one where his B12 was double the normal range. So it was 1,483 nanograms per milliliter against a suggested range of 150 to 950. So this is strange as B12 is water soluble and would normally be excreted if there was excess. So Dr. Sinclair did mention in his podcast with Dr. Saladino in November last year that he started taking methyl B12 to counteract his depletion of methyl groups from taking NMN. But he didn't mention any info about the usage, the dosage per day. So Dr. Sinclair tweeted that because of this result, he was going to stop taking his methyl B vitamin folate chewable tablets. For ourselves, we still take, we're still taking methyl vitamin B12, 300 micrograms, and TMG, 500 milligrams per day. We would love to get a B12 test, but it's not common in Hong Kong, but, so we will have to keep looking. So biological age test. So I'm planning to have another age test at the end of March, which will be my six month mark for taking NMN. Please watch my previous video about my last epi-aging test for more details on how it works. So we use HKG Epitherapeutics, which is based in Hong Kong, but is available worldwide. They've been kind enough to offer a 10% promotion code for their biological age test to our YouTube audience. So please find the code for this in the description. This is the company that we're using now for our biological age test, but please make please feel free to make your own judgment. We've created two playlists, one on epi-aging and one on NMN and resveratrol, where we have selected some videos that we find valuable to watch. I will continue to add more videos to these playlists. I put in times in the description of the playlists to key topics in the videos. And finally, I have opened a Twitter account on Modern Healthy Hong Kong, which I mostly use to retweet items that I think are of interest in the anti-aging area. The link to that is also below. So please do subscribe. We will continue making videos on our NMN experience and other anti-aging protocols. Thank you so much to people who commented in our previous videos. We love to hear your opinion and to learn about your experiences. Thanks again, and I look forward to speaking to you all soon.